on chapter eight topics. So what you can do, oops, um, lost, I'm already losing focus here, is just listen for a bit, and then we'll talk about what to write down. Because I think, I'll, I mean, I'll definitely give you time to write things down, and I think it'll make more sense. So Amelia, let's pull that chair down over there, and then you can sit there. Okay, so chat breaks, all kinds of topics. We're going to focus on angles, finding missing angles in different situations today. That's the focus. There's other things in chapter eight. So, but the goal today is to find missing angles. And in order to do that, there's all kinds of different situations. So you need to know some of the words on the back of the worksheet I gave you. Okay, so first of all, just some simple definitions are important on this page here at the very bottom. So the word complementary just means when you have complementary angles, two angles, they sum to 90 degrees. So you're going to use that vocabulary today. Okay. And when you have supplementary angles, they sum to 180 degrees. Okay, so a picture that might go with these. So it's always really nice to have a definition and a picture. Sometimes you'll see like a picture like this and you'll see the little square angle marker. That means that those are 90 degrees together. There's two angles here. So like if this angle here was um, 25 degrees from here to here, and this were x, x would have to be 65. Oh, yes, 65. Because 25 plus 65 makes 90. So that's an example of complementary angles. But they don't have to be, they don't have to be joined like that. So that's a real common example. Um, shrink that one up. That's one picture. But you could also have still recognized it. I don't know that. So you could have this kind of example where they're joined. Um, but you could also have um, two angles that are just, you know, like actually, um, let me draw it a little better. We, you could have a second pair of angles that if you imagine sticking them together would form that right angle, but you would have a statement where it says something about the angles, like find angle A if A and B are complementary. You might see something like that. Yes, and I just haven't finished that. It would. Right, that's what he said. They might call it, they might even say complement. So that's kind of the terminology. So you would see, um, you, you would say maybe this was 70. And so therefore you would have to figure out A is 20. So it's really not hard, it's just a vocab word that is known for some of you. Does that make sense? 
That would be a separate example. So that's like example two. So that's kind of all you need to know about complements. Supplements form 180 degrees. So similar things would be um, that you might have a picture like this. And maybe this is 45 degrees. Nobody would need to tell you they're supplementary if they make a straight line. Because a straight line, think about like on your snowboard, the first little turn you would learn is a 180, right? Or on a skateboard. So a line, and that's a half turn, right? So, you know, that would be going from facing there to facing here. That, that whole thing is 180 degrees. the whole yellow angle. So if I asked you what x was here, it would have to be 45 plus something, right? Has to equal 180. So right, you would just subtract 45. And you would get that something, which we usually call a variable. 100 and 135. So those are supplementary. They can be stuck together like that. When they're stuck together, that means they're adjacent. So um, I didn't put that vocab word in there, but but we we should start thinking about being able to read that adjacent. Angles share a common side. So in other words, here there's two angles. There's like the one that I'm highlighting in yellow. And then the one I'm highlighting in the yeah, pinkish, fuchsia, whatever. But they both have that middle side. It's common, so they're adjacent. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the, would be the, ones really that, so the that two would be angles that. together are adjacent. They're a pair. I'm confused which one's the common side. Oh, yeah, the common side, right, is the one that is overlapping in color. And so, like, over here, here is a pair, even though there's one 90 degree angle, it's formed by two adjacent angles. So these two adjacent angles form one other angle, okay? So the example one up here has a pair of adjacent angles, but these two angles over here, they're not adjacent because they don't share a common side. They have to share a common side. Just the two angles. They're just, yeah. So adjacent is like, think of them stuck together. But they have a whole common side. So uh, let me bring in another page. If I did um, adjacent angles as some pictures, now you might want to draw these. And I don't know that there's enough space on your sheet, but maybe on a sheet of note paper, just some examples and non-examples of a couple of different things. So we want to know what adjacent angles look like. We also want to know what vertical angles look like. And Sometimes just having some examples and non-examples is a good way to do that. And then we'll practice a few problems. So, 
I would put these in your notes. So that's fine. If you if you remember things really easily, maybe you don't need to put them in your notes, but you don't have a lot of room for pictures, so this is a good thing. These are some things you should know. So in this picture, adjacent angles, if I said angle one, what would be an angle that's adjacent to it? Two is two is adjacent to it. Anything else? That's a pair of adjacent angles. And so you can also say angle one and three. Four. four. But angle one and three would be a non-example. Because here is angle one and here's angle three, and they don't have a common side. The only thing they have in common is the vertex. Okay, so with my picture. So so if you look at one and two, if we just check why I did that, angle one. And angle two, share that side where the color is yellow and green overlap. That's why they're adjacent. Does that make sense? You guys get that? And then if I take this and rotate it, it's angle one and angle four. Okay. So they're adjacent. They're also supplementary. Why is that? Because they add to 180 and make the line. So vertical, so let's do one more thing. So if I said what's adjacent to angle 6, angle 6 and angle what? 5 would be 1 or angle 6 and angle 7. So they come in pairs. But something that's not adjacent to 6 would be angle four would not be, or two would not be. 79? Because they have to share a common side. So angle six and angle two. So this is angle six here, right? This one. But angle two is way up here. They don't share a common side. They don't actually. Okay, so they might have some common measures, but they're not. We're talking about the actual objects. So they have to six and six and four. Mm, good point. I see what you're saying. So they share it, but when you think of six and four, uh, we wouldn't. I should say they share a common side. Nicely pointed out, and a common vertex. So go back to here. See, I didn't get that comp like sophisticated because I didn't. I wasn't form formal enough. Share a common side, and a common vertex. The vertex is the point, the sharp edge. So when we go back to that picture. Here, when you look at angle four now and angle six, they only have a common side, but they don't have the vertex in common. See, the vertices aren't, they're in two different places. Does that make sense? The vertex for six is here and the vertex for four is there. That was good, smart. Yeah, probably like this, but like angle six and angle one. Be different. Okay, so we're going to get to that in a minute. Sometimes. The question was, are angle six and angle one equal? In my picture, they are, aren't they? I purposely was like pulling the yellow around. Oh, but now it's separated. Isn't that weird? With the greens in it. Like you, you might have seen me take this angle and slide it to different places. That happens only when these two lines here are parallel. Yeah, so this would be a good time to talk about the sheet so far. 
Let's go back. Okay. So let's go back to the front of the sheet and use a, a couple of notes with the notes. See if you could find as many x values on find. See if you could do problem one, problem two, and problem five using your algebra skills and just what we talked about. Well, three I think you could probably do two. We didn't talk about those two angles. Those are vertical angles. Oh yeah, I guess I cut it out. I got to renumber. Sorry. Yeah, did I do the same thing? Angles that form a line? Oh, we'll make it form. Okay, so on the back side, angles that form, this should be form. So let's just do quick check on your answers, Lauren. What did you get for X on number one? I got 30. 30, and how come? Because it's a complementary angle. Right. Two angles. The two angles are complementary. It's a right angle. Okay. How about Easton? What did you get for number two? Okay. So you know, what do you know about this angle in here? Um, it's, it's a... It's a it's 90 degrees, right? Yeah. So you have 90 degrees and your 65 degrees make up. And so the missing value to make the total of 180, 25. Okay, raise your hand if that is, if you guys agree with that. Okay, good. So um, on number five, if we look at our vocabulary, these two angles form a line, they're supplementary because they make 180 degrees. So, Noah, how would you do that algebraically? Like, what would you do with this angle and this angle? I just did guess and check. Okay. What did you get for guess and check? It's a good start. 27.5. Um, 27.5. We'll see if it's right. Um, but, but what do you know about if I call this angle one and angle two together? What do you know about them? They're supplementary, right? So they add up to be 180. So make go back to the beginning of the year. Sorry. Add them together. 5x minus 15 plus 3x minus 25. They equal 180 together. Does that make sense? So that's a good review problem because, you know, those are kind of challenging for you guys. I think you might remember I always like did something with color in the like terms. So I would all together you have 8x and then you have a negative 15 and a negative 25. Minus so a minus 40. You add 40 to both sides, and you get whoops, sorry, 220 equals 8x divided by 8. So let's practice that short division. 8 goes into 20 twice, right? Mm -hmm. And the remainder is into 22. 6, right? I didn't make a very nice, clean number, but 8 goes into 6 how many times? 8 goes into 60 how many times? 7. 7. 8 times 7 is 56. So you have to put a decimal here, don't you? And 8 goes into 40 how many times? 5. Five. So Noah was right. For x, that's x, right? But what's the angle? We would have to triple it, wouldn't we? 
So I'll pull a calculator out here. We'll do this with the calculator. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't read my directions. Good. Could you find the angle now? Yeah. Good. You could. You could plug it in, right? Good job. Okay. Raise your hand if that makes sense so far. Okay. So let's go back to this page with the definitions here uh, where I was writing examples and non-examples. Vertical angles um, get rid of some of these highlighting. Oh, that's a little Okay, vertical angles are the next type, and they are just two angles that when you, they're formed by intersecting lines, but they're not adjacent angles. So they're not next to each other. So they're formed by two intersecting lines, but they're opposite of each other. Does that make sense? They're not next to each other. They only share a common vertex, but they don't share common sides. So vertical angles, they're formed by two intersecting lines. Not adjacent. So the thread would be vertical angles, and so would the the green. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you number them. So the adjacent angles share a, a side but not a vertex. These only. I mean, a shot side and a vertex, and these only share a vertex and no sides. And they have to be formed by intersecting lines. So they have to be formed by intersecting lines. So if I did some examples here with the other, with this picture that you have on your paper. You know, one and one are vertical. You know, those are adjacent. One and angle three are vertical. So that would be an example. They're, yeah, they're like opposite angles. So another, so a non-example would be angle one and angle four, or angle one and angle two, or angle one and angle five. Okay, they have to be formed by intersecting lines. So if I put angle two here, what's the vertical angle of that? Four. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they have to be formed by intersecting lines. So here are two intersecting lines. And they have to be non-adjacent. So something that a picture of non, a, a non-example picture, these two angles here, like even if it's close to intersecting lines, oops, <coughs> try that again. So even if it's close to intersecting lines, but not exactly, those are not vertical. Can you see that? Because there's like a bend here, right? Here to here, that's not a line. Yeah, but it has to be formed by two intersecting lines. So it has to be smooth, just two lines. 
see that, Ethan? Here's a, that sort of summarizes what we just talked about. So the left-hand column uh, are examples and the right-hand column are non-examples. Okay, how are we doing? So going back to Matthew's question, he asked about this picture right here and asked when things were equal, okay? So just to keep it kind of clean, I'm gonna bring in another paper. I'm gonna um, take that same picture. I'm just gonna clone the page here and erase some things. all of this. And just kind of focus on this picture here. This picture, the way I drew it, I drew two parallel lines. So I think you can see that this line that I drew was parallel to this line. And this is a line that cuts across them. It's called the transversal. It just goes across them. When you see parallel lines, you're going to see little symbols like this. You can't assume they're parallel. You have to be told they're parallel. Okay. If the lines are parallel, and I look at angles, you know that, what do you know about vertical angles? Like if I clone this, and rotate it, what do you know about angle two and angle four? They're the same. They're the same, always. It doesn't even matter if the lines are not parallel. Like if I took another picture and drew two lines that were not parallel. If I look at the vertical angles here, they're still vertical angles. You see these are vertical angles? Mm -hmm. They're still going to be equal. Watch. If I take trace over them, and clone this and spin it, it's going to fit in just perfectly. But when the lines are parallel up in this picture, angle one, oops, that was kind of sloppy. Let's try that again. Angle one looks the same as angle what? Right. Well, and that's because it's vertical. So vertical angles are always going to be the same. So that's true. Angle one and angle three are the same. But it's also the same as angle what? Eight, right? And six, right? So when the lines are parallel, you can see that like these angles, there's some congruent angles. And so, Matthew, that's kind of the beginning to your question. But on that worksheet, there are so many things. I don't want to do it all in one day, so we'll work on that tomorrow. Okay? So a lot of it is due tomorrow, but not all of it. Okay? Well, I'm going to write it down for you in a minute. But I just wanted to go back to what Matthew asked. Okay? So vertical angles are always equal you guys, no matter what, in the picture where there's parallel lines and when they're not parallel, vertical angles are always equal. Okay, so do you see that the statement on the back there on the worksheet, there's like some definitions going back to this page. Vertical angles are always equal. Okay, so the last thing I want to introduce to you is about 
about polygons. Yeah, angles that form a line are supplementary. That would be a good one to put in. Okay, so the last concept would be on polygons. So polygon. So. So let's start with a triangle. How many degrees are in a triangle? 180. Does everybody know that? So, um, yeah, I didn't, that's okay. I didn't do that. So the sum of the angles, angles one, if I put numbers in them, equal 180. And you guys learned that a long time ago, but we haven't practiced it a lot. No matter what the triangle, right? It cut, yeah, it definitely comes in. One way I teach it in sixth grade is we look at the angles <laughs> with like paper, and they do this in elementary school. I even do it in my geometry class. So if you trace the three angles, If you trace the three angles, they should piece together to make a line. See how I did that? Like if you tore the corners off a triangle, you should be able to tape them on a straight line. And the straight line is 180 degrees, right? It's a good way to remember it. What? Yeah. So the thing is, you guys also know a rectangle has four right angles, right? Okay. So a rectangle has how many degrees in it? 360 degrees total. One way to think about that is if you take, yeah, if you split it in half, that's exactly right. So if you just think about this divided into two triangles, each triangle has 180 degrees. So even if you didn't have a rectangle, but you just had a four-sided figure, a quadrilateral, you could take that and divide it into two triangles. And each triangle has 180 degrees. So it's 360. So what if you had a five-sided figure? Is that six? No. Okay. If you have a five-sided figure, break it into triangles, right? Non-overlapping triangles. So each triangle has 180 degrees. Right. So it's three times 180. So it's 540. What if you had six sides? Break it into triangles. And how many triangles would there be? Four. Four triangles, right? And so each triangle has 180 degrees. So it's 4 times 180. 720. Is that what you're going to tell me? Um, no, but to find the, the, the ego number of sides minus 1 times 180. Good. To find the rule, this is number of sides but not minus 1. Right. Yeah. Right. Subtract 1 to get the number of triangles. Right. Number of sides minus 2, Sean. Yeah. Times 180. Oh, yeah. Because if you think about it, with the picture, you take your vertex and you don't connect to the, the you connect to this vertex and this vertex and this vertex, 
but you don't connect to these two because they're sides. So it's all those two less than the number of sides times 180. If you're a rule person, that's a great rule. If you're a picture person, I think the picture works better. I'm a picture person, but the rules are important. Okay? So when you look back at your sheet now, now do you have a question? Yeah. Okay, so when you look back at your sheet, in 9A, oh yeah, I, it's because I was editing this and I forgot to change everything. So it's just find the measure of angle E. So the first thing you would do is figure out how many sides there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how much should that add up to? 720. Okay, so I'm going to stop that and then tell you what I need you to do for a